Hey, bro. No, 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 no. Is... no, 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 wait. Hey. I, I... You can't just go. Ah. Need to be ready, man. Go ahead, I'm ready. Hey, y'all. This seems so far away. Hey, y'all. Wait, wait, let me come here. Okay, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, man. Hey, y'all. I'm T, and this is Tay. Thank you for watching. You tuned in for another edition of Pillow Talk. We're grateful that you tuned us in, and uh, we hope that all of our expertise is helping you out because it's uh, expert advice from within. Definitely. And we're just excited to be able to share our relationship and our uh, views about things to you. And we just hope it's uh, been uh, rewarding for you. Sorry. Thank you, May. I appreciate it. Sorry, I got the Google. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. But yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. It's really it's with my love. Might as well. Might as well. Um, to the fact that I have the giggles right now based on our topic, it's kind of challenging. Uh, but hey, I still got the giggles, you know. But we talk about this, you know, in previous episodes. You know, a relationship should be you should be able to laugh yeah. and enjoy hanging out with your mate and getting on their nerves just a little bit just to make them laugh too. Because he know he wanted to laugh on the inside. He just wouldn't let it go. He didn't want to show you guys laughter. He has it in there. She's a sanguine. And when sanguines are this way, you know, you know how sanguines can be. What? What is a sanguine? Oh, gosh. That's another topic for another discussion. <laughs> Y'all look that up and tell me what it is. Because I don't know if it's a good thing or not. You got one on her. <laughs> he wants help. Any who? Goodness. Okay, I can do it. All right. So to get into the day, today's topic, um, it is a bit of a challenging and a difficult one to talk about. Um, so I guess that for me, my my uh, uh, laughter is kind of like to ease me into the topic itself. It just helps to break the ice for me um, because it is a challenging one. But today's topic is dealing with loss while in a relationship. Like, how do you? deal with losing a parent or losing a child or losing a grandparent or someone that was very close and near and dear to you and not lose your marriage in the process. Because a lot of times what happens is um, we sometimes die with that person, even though they tell us not to die with them. <clears throat> Emotionally, we die with them. Mentally, we die with them. And it puts a strain on the marriage. And it causes the marriage to sometimes drift apart and sometimes fall apart. So how do we deal with um, losing loved ones in our marriage? Um, when we, we were married fresh in. I hadn't even married him when I lost my father. Um, and then I, we got married. And, and then right after that, in September, I lost my uncle, and he was very close and near and dear to us as well. He was my father's brother. And then in October, to put the icing on the cake, I lost my grandmother. And um, my grandmother was like a pillar in my life. Very, very, very um, important person. Not to say my father and uncle weren't, but my grandmother really, really had a big impact on my life. <clears throat> Me and my father, our relationship got together and got stronger when we were, when I was an adult. Um, it wasn't as strong when I was younger because he wasn't around or present as much as I would have loved him to be um, due to circumstances that didn't allow it. Um, but as we got older, we did have a relationship. But my grandmother really was like a really impactful person. She was like one of my best friends. Um, we could go, I can go and sit on the porch and talk with her every day, every night. Um, whenever I was in Indiana where she was, um, it was it was awesome to have that in a grandmother, and it kind of, it helped to make me who I am as a person, as a woman today. The things that I've learned from her, uh, along with my mother and my aunts, aunts and cousins along the way as well, like just different things. But I feel like she's had the most impact in me, and it's really been um, very helpful. Um, so when I lost her, I really started to feel. 
I was like I was losing myself. Um, I felt like I had lost hope. I know that God does what he does. Um, and it's a part of his plan. And death is challenging to deal with. Um, but having someone there that can go through this with you is very significant. Um, I don't know if I would have been able to really pull all the way through had I not had my husband there. Um, I'm grateful for him. And the thing that helped us to deal with the loss during the relationship was having each other and having someone to talk to. Um, not just taking on those emotions all by yourself and figuring out how to go on with life on your own. Um, when it initially happened, I was in like more so shock. Um, because these people were gone. And I didn't know how to address the feelings I, were feel, I was feeling or um, the emotions that came with it. I didn't know I didn't know how to do it. Um, but he didn't give up on me. He stayed in it with me and you know we got to the other side of it. And like I said, it took before I really could just be able to say their names and talk about what's happened to them. I still get emotional, but not as emotional as I have been, as I was, but it took maybe about five or six years. They both been, all three of them have been gone now, going on, what, eight years? Um, eight, it was eight years in February for my father, uh, on the 14th. And it's been eight years, but it took around about five years before I was able to really like come out of the sadness of it all. Um, but through that process, Therapy had to come in. Um, he was, like I said, he was here for me to talk with me through it all, to help me um, get to the other side of things and just be okay. He wasn't that person that was saying, they're dead, they're gone, get over it. He was more so really understanding my feelings behind it because he had lost loved ones as well. He had lost his grandfather prior to me coming. He had also lost his mother prior to me coming into the relationship with him. Um, so he understood how that felt to lose a parent, to lose someone very close and significant to you that was really, really that close to you and how to deal with it. And like I said, I thank God I have him to do life with and to get through the difficulties that come with it. Um, but I'm truly grateful, blessed, but communication and just allowing that person in not pushing them away, even though you don't know what emotions you're feeling or how to even understand them or address them or make sense of anything that's going on. Don't push away those that are there for you, that care, that love you, and that want to be there for you and help you. Allow them in so you don't die with the ones that went before you. Yeah, I would say communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, and like, as my wife uh, Teddy is saying, don't die with them because they want the only way they can their story can be told is through you. Okay. And so you have to be able to know that their story and your life is a life worth living. Mm -hmm. You have to know that about about life. And we all going to face this, and someone else is going to take up the mantle of explaining and, and sharing your life and uh, my life and so we have to be knowing that we all have expiration time and uh sometimes it, it comes in off guard times but uh we all just have an expiration time and you really have to learn how to communicate and to know not to turn against those that are around you that are trying to help you cope. They don't mean any harm. They trying to help you cope and trying to help you to understand that you have a life of your own worth living as yeah. well as the loved one that has moved, has gone on. And you have to be able to tell their story. Yeah, I agree. Um, so instead of, um, I know everyone deals with grief so totally different, not no two people understand and deal with grief the same way. Um, so just making sure you are acknowledging your feelings. Don't not never, don't ever just sit in the point and just 
dismiss how you're feeling about something that is happening or the, the loss of your loved one. Right. Address address those feelings, acknowledge those feelings, but don't allow yourself to sit in those feelings for so long that you lose yourself in the process. Um, because a lot of times it's more it's challenging. You will lose the loved ones around you that are wanting to help you because you're pushing them away. You're you're not allowing them in to your circle, to your bubble. I know it takes time. Talking from experience, I know it takes time. Think about that. That was sixty months. 60 months of me dealing with the grief of losing my father, losing my uncle, and losing my grandmother. 60 months. And just being able to process that, being able to get through that. So it's not an overnight thing. No. Um, it's, it's being patient with yourself, allowing yourself to go through. And then a lot, and being patient with the others around you and vice versa, those that are around you, hopefully they're being patient with you to allow you to process what's happening. But don't turn it to anger. Don't turn it to frustration. Don't turn it to hatred. You know, don't allow, don't allow that grief to turn into that. Deal with the emotion that comes with it. You may be angry because of how that loved one um, got, lost their life. But that's not going to bring them back. And it's not going to help you to heal by being angry. By being mad, um, address the feeling, have the feeling, cry, yell, scream, whatever it is you need to do to get it out of you so you can then start the healing process. Because there are phases to grief that we have to go through in order to begin to heal. Um, I will never forget my father. I will never forget my uncle, my grandmother, or any of my other relatives or friends that have gone on before me. I will never forget them. I hope they hold a piece in my heart and a place in my heart always. And I remember, like you said, like you said, to be able to tell the story, I remember all the things that we've ever done together so I can be able to be here alive to tell the story about them and how great the people they were and how much impact they had on my life. You know, so you not you're not forgetting them because you're healing. You are allowing yourself to continue to live and they will be so happy that you continue to live when they were gone on. But you're allowing yourself to heal and to be able to live and can keep living because you've got so many other people around you that you're living for. Even if you've lost a lot of people in your life, there's still someone out there in this world that loves you and cares about you because they're checking in on you and making sure you're okay and they need you here. So um, communication with each other, um, patience with yourself um, really helps through the process and um, get to the other side of things so anything else on you could you heard loss while we were together how did you deal with it oh uh, boy mine mine was it was a little bit stronger uh because what we did what happened was uh wow i've had a, a sister that was uh that lost two years after we were married uh, then my grandmother um, two years after that, and um, as my wife mentioned, I, I had already lost others. So these were real matriarchs in the family that were no longer uh, around. In fact, the way it is now, standing from childhood, I have no one to tell my story. I'm the only one left to be able to tell my story. Because uh, my siblings that I have, I'm older than them. Mm -hmm. And so there's no one to tell my story. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's still, you know, go through your mind and everything. But at the same time, what I've tried to do in, uh, is to allow the memories to happen, rather good, bad, or indifferent. Because yeah. as you're in a relationship or you have children, things come up and you remember you reflect back to how it used to be. Mm -hmm. But I reflect back, but I don't stay there. As my pastor said today, you can't just, you can't stay in the past. You got to live in the, love the present. Yes. And that's what I took away from it, the love the present. You know, you can reflect on the past, but don't stay in the past, but come to the present. Love the present. And that's where I am. And that's where I realized I've learned to love my present, love the present, and then love um, 
it's it's just really um, delicate to explain. I have a wife that really supports me and is really uh, have a good loving relationship. But I'm also being able to impart to the younger ones, uh, such as the grandbabies and whomever I ask about the past, about how this person was, how that person was. And oftentimes I may even mention their name, especially the grandmother, I mean, um, which was my mother. It was their great grandmother that just passed, uh, uh, in, you know, in 2018. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm trying to explain all the different uh, parts of the family to them and everything, and then explain to their char about their character. And so it was challenging at, at first, and you know, at times you get to reflect a little bit further. But you're always going to have this, and it's just uh, a part of life. And uh, I've learned to adjust, and then also uh, go forward, you know, and also intertwine my own life in, in things, and uh, find my happiness and find my love. And um, then I even look at her pictures from time to time, and, and I'm okay, you know. And uh, I just know that they're in a better place. Um, you wish you, you could have the loved ones, but, uh, you know, uh, for whatever reasons, uh, some could be age, some could be just situations and some could be things you didn't see coming, but, uh, you have to allow the healing process to take place. And you have to realize that you can tell the story and you can be the difference maker and being able to share the story to the generations to come and to whoever else that you're, uh, whatever platform you have, you're able to share and help someone else uh, through a hurt and through a healing, uh, through, you know, a loss. And, uh, you know, it, it is, I, I'm not going to say it's easy. Like my wife said, it takes time. And, uh, but, you know, you just make sure that you don't die along with them because your life is worth living. And that's what I would say is realize that your life is worth living. Hold it. Um, I don't have anything else to add on that. Um, I feel like that was well put and well said. And <clears throat> definitely, like I said, making sure you keep living. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely um, don't push away the ones in your life that are trying to be there for you, that are trying to help you to get to the other side of what's going on. Um, it's a process. Be patient with yourself, be patient with those around you, and I pray that those around you will be patient with you as you continue to um, work towards your healing process and get to that phase of life where you can be able to be okay with saying that person's name or thinking about them without breaking down into tears. They will always be with you, um, and you'll never forget them, but don't die with them, uh, and don't allow yourself to get so far gone that you lose your marriage or you lose the person or people in your life that have been there for kids. you and, want to, and your kids you, you push start pushing people away don't get so far down that you start to push away those other significant people in your life that are there to help you with the healing process they need you definitely still need they you. need you your mates they need you yes um people you know whatever platform of business or work there are uh, business that you're in, they need you, yes. and you can help someone else. You really yes. can, yes. and that's yes. what it's all about: helping others. You know, look uh, beyond just your circumstance and realize <laughs> that there's others that are just like you, mm -hmm. and they need you. And uh, you're also making your loved ones proud, the, the ones that you've lost. They're cheering us on, and uh, they're with us every step of the way. When we go to sleep, when we wake up, they're with us. Yes. I, I'm a sole believer of that. That they're, they're with us. And um, they're not to be forgotten, but they're to be, um, what do you call it, appreciated and celebrated. Yes, definitely. That's what they're there for to do. And not just be celebrated in the moment, but to be celebrated from time to time in generations. Because you're going to see them and somebody or, you know, mm -hmm. you, you may even see animals that you've lost and you see the animal looks just like you know, the previous animal that you may have had yeah. and that you lost. And you're like, wow, you know, or you see someone else's uh, animal and they're just like you, you know, mm -hmm. or just like the one you lost. And it's really, uh, you just got to know. You may even need to go to a veterinarian uh, place and volunteer, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they just have a lot of different help resources out there that help you cope. Yes. And uh, i so a believer of taking advantage of those. Yes, definitely. You know. And uh, seek 
the necessary help before uh, ruining anything that you could possibly have when yourself or with one another or mm -hmm. for your children even. Yeah, there's a lot of grief support groups out yeah. there. Um, that you can do solely or you can do with your mate, you know, that way you both can know like how it's helping and how they can help you continue to work towards healing. Um, we didn't take part in any of those, but we know that they're out there. So we definitely, you know, say that that's something that's available to you as well. If it just becomes so difficult, you can't do it on your own. Um, definitely therapy because it's necessary. You've got to be able to understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling and talk with someone that's on a professional level. Um, that can help you. Um, our our um, beliefs and our religion, our church life has was helpful as well. We had a good ministry around us that was very supportive. They were praying for us. They were there. They were understanding. They were patient with us. Um, so just making sure you have that support around you. You surround yourself with people who are truly there to support you, to help build you up, to help you um, get to the other side of things. Yeah. But, and be the better you. Yes, be the better yeah. you. Is that it? Do you got anything else on that? No. No? All right. Well, that's all we have on that topic for today. Um, we thank you guys again so much for joining us and um, being a part of this with us. Um, we really, truly appreciate all of the likes, the comments, the views. We are here for you guys. So whatever it is that you feel like you want to know about, definitely put it in the comment section below. If we want to make that into a topic, we'll talk about that as well. Um, we both have been through a lot in life. We've lived a lot of life, so we've got a lot to share. Um, and anything that we can help kind of make, uh, help you get through or understand why you go through what you go through, definitely don't hesitate to let us know. Um, we're very giving people and don't mind sharing what we got going on to help someone else help themselves. We like to let our test that we've been through be a testimony to someone else to help someone else get through theirs. Um, but that's all I've got for today. Yeah. All right. We thank you guys yeah. again for watching. Um, we'll see you guys next week on Pillow Talk with Tay. Mm -hmm. But that's it for today. Yep. Stay strong. Bye, guys. All right. We'll see you. We can't help it. <laughs> you make me this way. Oh, there you go. I am. Uh, I'm focused. Don't be that way. Cool. That's not nice. Cool. Don't take those from purple. Yeah. <laughs> Yours look almost blue, though. No, it looks purple. Yeah, I don't know what they're saying. It's straight up purple. Right? On there, it looks almost blue. See, it's still, your shirt almost looks blue. What do you think? I don't know. I quit drinking. <laughs> I was just saying. I mean, I know we have. Similar colors, but I was just thinking yours is more blue. Man, that was purple. At the regular eye, it's purple, but the camera eye, it looks blue. Mm -hmm. It's purple. Okay. The more I look at it, it looks purple. You don't have your glasses on, do you? That's probably what the problem is. You can't really see that. I see long distance, not up close, ma'am. Thank you. I'm different because I can see it all this where everybody else can't. Why are we whacking our heads though? Like, <laughs> are you telling America that you can see? Mm -hmm. All right. Next time you need me to read something, you ain't got your glasses, you remember that, all right? Mm -hmm. All right now, you remember? <laughs> <laughs>